Reporting in progress.
be training in here? Yes, ma'am. We'll start right at six. Okay. You know how bad parking okay. oh yeah it's not here anyway. <laughs> yeah sometimes it can be ooh. <laughs> I had found um, parking spot right away. I was like, yes.
Today we had class this morning and um and we had Oh, it's good to see people, even if it is on Zoom. Yeah. Hey there. How's everybody in Zoom land? Do we have audio from there? Oh, we should, yes. So, can anybody hear me? Unmuted. Oh, yeah. Can you? Rebecca can hear me? Good. Good. Yes, we hear you. <laughs> oh, there's Kendra. Hi. <laughs> good to see all y'all's faces, even if they're not live. It's good to see y'all. Hey, Liz. Rebecca coming coming to us from the villages down in Florida. Good to see you. Ron, we got Alicia, Gloria. <laughs> Phyllis, Adam. Well, I'm excited. Even if y'all are not with us, we oh, look at that, we got more folks coming on. I'm excited. I really am. I was hoping we'd get some participation and more, more participation. Uh, there's Gideon. Good to see you, Gideon. Jewel. Gloria, we got Mary. Look at that. It's just filling up with all these happy, smiling, smiling faces. <laughs> Mary, look at all them folks. We're happy for you. <laughs> see y'all. Tim, yeah. Linda's on there. Password. Make sure y'all turn y'all's cameras on because I don't get to see everybody every day anymore. So I like to see you even if it's on, if it's virtual. Good to see all y'all. Hey, so I'm excited that we have so many people joining because, um, you know, I, I don't want to under uh, a Cindy. I want to not mention everybody that comes to see me. Uh, I don't want to under um, value this this product. OK, um, and I know I said it on the video, but not but not everybody. Hey, come on in, man. Good to see you. I know not everybody saw the video or maybe didn't watch it. Hey, hey, come on in. Watch the chairs. Some of them are pissed. Some, some of them are pissed. Yeah, look, I got I got gypped on the chair, okay? okay. I, I said, we need some new chairs. I said, we need some new chairs in the classroom, and I went over to Amazon. They said, oh, yeah, these look good, and ordered them. And when I got them, I didn't realize how cheap they were, and they've been. I'm like, Amazon, they got me again. The true story, I'm not going to get off track, but true story about that. So, you know, remember when, when the pandemic first hit and everybody was panicking about toilet paper? Yeah. Remember that? And, and, the, and the grocery stores literally like sold out of toilet paper. And at first you're like, oh, that's not going to happen. And you go to the grocery store and you're like, crap, I better get some. You know, you have all the <laughs> Listen, I, I was in Charleston at, at our South Carolina office when it all happened. And I was like, this ain't going to be good. And I so but the whole store was sold out of, 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 of any toilet paper. And I'm like, this may be a real thing. And so I went on Amazon because I had a, a monthly thing that comes to my house with the, you know, toilet paper. And of course it said, you know, it wasn't going to be able to deliver. So I went on there trying to find some. And I found some toilet paper packs. And they were like eight, eight packs. And I'm like, that's what I need right there. And they were available. I'm like, yeah, let me get three of those. <laughs> I'm not joking. I kept them. They were this big. The toilet <laughs> rolls were that big. I'm like, y'all done tricked me. <laughs> It looked huge. Did you read the description? I didn't, I didn't look at the measurement. <laughs> Long time advertising. My mother yeah. got, um, they ended up giving her 15 cases. So she still has to pull like, the paper. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was normal ones, but um, yeah, 15 cases. Oh, that was crazy. So it, Anyway, these chairs were another one that I, it, it looked good, but I didn't read you know, how thick the metal was or something. It was just, anyway. So we're getting some new ones. We're going to reorder them. 
Um, anyway. I'll let you not order nothing anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, they don't tell me not to order. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let people who know better how to order. <laughs> They're going to be like, no. Well, I can't uh, order that. Let's, let's look at something yeah, else. Right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, you know, get getting started so you guys can get straight into it. I know um, I am really excited to see so many people getting on, online and checking this out. This, and I said it in the video, but I won't kind of repeat it. This literally is a game changer. This is a this is a real deal here. I mean, and it, and it, and and I I don't want to go in and say how much money we spent on it because I'm not trying to do that. But I don't want you guys to think, oh, it's free, you know, whatever. This is a very very big deal, and it's a, it's expensive. And as an agent, you can't even buy this software if you want it. Brokerages that have less than 150 agents can't even buy this kind of product if they want it. It's 150 agent minimum. So it's a, it's a really big deal. It does so many things. We don't want to overwhelm you also. But the main thing I want to get across to you guys is it is valuable and it is expensive and it is we are providing it. And so I want you to at least say, hey, you know, I want to, I want to learn about it and not get overwhelmed, but just know that it's valuable because if you if you think something that doesn't have a price, sometimes we don't value it and don't think it's a big deal, but it really is. And rather than me say, I'm gonna make you pay for it, I'm gonna say, we're gonna give it to you, but just just feel like you pay for it, okay? Because it is, it is a big deal. So, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed. There's a lot of parts to this thing. If, you, if anybody, can you, come on in. Come on in. If any of you have, have already looked at any of it, then you can start already sometimes, you know, getting a little overwhelmed. You start seeing all the different buttons. Because it's got a lot of modules, but don't don't worry if you don't get into all the modules. Get one thing at a time, and then you can get the next thing. Okay. And the most important thing that you're going to learn is this: what we're going over tonight, which is engage. That is the center of everything. It's where your all your contacts go. It's where everything happens. Once you get that down, next week we're going to be talking about the website or what is present present. So we got the present coming next week, and that's about your listing presentations and. You know, looking more professional when you're on your listing appointments and things and then you'll have the next one which will be website website so each each week we're going to be rolling out the next thing and so when you put them all together there's this entire business management platform that does it all and i'm talking about it'll, it'll do some things that will blow your mind when you all start using this thing literally like if you get a new listing you put in your pictures and stuff in the mls You'll get an and this won't be for a few weeks, but it'll eventually when these are rolled out. The next day you'll get an email and it'll say, here's all your marketing pieces for your new listing. Flyers, postcards, social media ads, uh, a video. They take all your pictures and put music with them and put it, get you a video you can post on YouTube. I mean, it, it's a big deal. And then you do a price reduction, you get email the next day. Here's all your updated price pricing on all your products. It's, it's, a, it's powerful. Um, one little thing that y'all may learn, you, you, are you talking tonight about anything to do with the newsletter? Um, very brief, very brief. I'll just give you a little sneak peek. The newsletter piece is really powerful. It is called Neighborhood News. Is that right? New, neighborhood News? Yes. Yeah. So what it is, and you should, if you, once you see it, where it's at, go in there and put your own email address and just start sending yourself so you can see what it is. But you can put it, you can sign people up based on their zip code. And what it does, it will, every month it will send them a newsletter from you saying, hey, here's what's going on in your area. And here's the sales and here's the statistics or whatever. And it will be valuable. But the other thing it does is when you log into your engage that we're going over today, it'll say, hey, uh, these five people opened up your newsletter five, three, four times. So you may want to call them. They may be thinking about doing something. So it's very powerful. But the other thing you can do is Let's say you live in a neighborhood that has a lot of homes and you know you'd like to farm the neighborhood you can you can not just zip code but you can actually do a search of a specific subdivision and send people just newsletters on the subdivision down to that level you know, school districts or whatever so it's a really powerful thing and you can send people multiple ones like you can send them hey here's one for your neighborhood here's one for the area that you're thinking about buying in whatever so a lot of things that it does, it reports to you who's opening them and things to do. To it. So, really good stuff. I'm not going to go much further because I want you guys to get into the training, but so excited that we have a big turnout today. I was really wanting us to see, you know, a lot of adoption because that's how we're going to see it make a difference in everybody's business. And they do a lot of cool things, and you guys will learn more every time we do one of these sessions. 
and uh, you, know, you probably want to go back and visit it again, and you'll learn more every time. So, uh, does anybody have any any questions in general for me before we turn it over and get the training going? Anybody have anything online? I want to see some more faces. Seth, where do I get the recording from session two? How I get to it? Uh, so I think we're going to record this recording on Zoom. Is this one? Yeah, recording now. And then we're going to we're going to post that link on back agent. So if you hopefully come on in, get your you got a spot, you got a seat. The okay. first two links should already be posted in back. Yeah, the first two the first two links are on back agent, and they are also on the hub. Thank you. Okay, good. So hopefully, if you guys, uh, you know, you join a back agent. And by the way, I wanted to make sure so we're trying to do multiple multiple ways to notify everybody. So we're doing typically we're posting it on back agent on the on the message board, and some of them we're emailing that out to everybody. So you get an email that links you back to back agent, so you can see the message. And then we're also, as you know, today we we're sending out some text messages. We're trying to overwhelm you with all this stuff, but this is you know. It, it is important. And once we go beyond today, we'll start training on the other things. And if you're not familiar with this, then you're going to have to watch the video to get ready for the next one. So we want to make sure we have a, you know, as big of a turnout today. So awesome. Anybody else have anything? All right. So with that, I'm not sure if, it's, if you're going to do the whole thing or is Amanda talking, but we're going to turn it over to you guys. And uh, you guys get I'm really excited to see your, your feedback. We also, once you get started with it, anybody who is doing it, we'd love to get a little video testimonial. We're gonna hope to get just a 10 or 20 second little video about, you know, what you like about it or whatever, and what you did with it. And so we can start encouraging other people to, to get involved. So, all right, great, good. All right, guys, happy, happy training. And I'll hope to see you guys all, all logging in, okay? All right, I'll check in with y'all later. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we know that everybody can hear because Shane was talking and nobody was screaming. I can't hear you. So we're doing good there. If you have any questions on Zoom, type them in the chat and I will try to get back to them as quickly as possible. If you have any questions in the classroom, just stop me, ask your question. I'll try to repeat it for the people on Zoom so they can hear the context of what I'm answering. Um, and we'll go from there. One thing I want you to understand, though, is that I do not know every inch, nook, or cranny of this software. I am learning it as we go. Um, I've had some additional training, but I don't know all the answers. So if you have a question that I can't answer, please make sure that that gets emailed to me or, or in some way that we can make a note of that so that I can get back to you on that. One thing I do want everybody to remember, or one thing I want to check out first, did everybody have a chance to watch the video, the videos, the training videos, the initial videos? No. Okay. That's the right. first one. Okay. There, are, there were a couple of links we sent out back before we did our first training that were some introductory videos that are on the Moxie Education Portal. And um, they were like an introduction into Moxie Engage as well as a deeper dive into Moxie Engage. So if you haven't watched those, I would recommend going back and watching those. You may get some additional information than what you get tonight, but you'll probably just get a repeat. So yes. Are they sent out to, through email? They were sent out through Back Agent, and I think an email was sent in conjunction with that. So um, if you're not getting communications like that, we need to make sure that we communicate that with Megan and we get all that remedied. OK, um, so that being said, primarily I've got a face for radio, so I am not going to be showing my face anymore. <laughs> um, we'll be stopping that video and I'm going to be sharing my screen because that's going to be what we're looking at most of the time tonight. OK, can everybody see my screen? Nods, yes. OK, uh, everybody in here, can you see OK? OK, all right. So the hub is where you will hopefully start your business day when you log into Moxie. Uh, Moxie is intuitive from the aspect of it normally will log you into the module that you were last doing stuff in. So if you were working in Engage and you logged out, it's going to take you back to Engage. 
if you were in present and it logged and you logged out, it will take you back to present. But I just want everybody to be aware that the hub, which is up here at the top, this is going to be where you really should have your um, home base or your initial start for everything dealing with Moxie and eventually for everything dealing with Backagent. You'll have one login here, and then you will click through to Backagent and it will automatically log you in to there. So everything will come through the hub. And on the hub, there is informative stuff, different types of um, boxes that just have at links to different information. Document center is what's going to wind up taking us to Backagent. Um, again, once everything is integrated, um, the calendar, AR events and updates, they, these are links to different things, Moxie training, FAQs, we're going to update the FAQs as we go because the FAQs are those fun, frequently asked questions that we get asked a thousand times and we want to make sure everybody knows the answers to those questions. Um, other helpful links, links to the university, Wall Street Journal Real Estate News, AR News Bites. I think that may be something um, that Amanda's setting up. American Realty News, that's going to be more like a, a, a blog, I believe. Is that right, Amanda? Um, it's a monthly, it, it will be more like a blog, but we'll also send it out as an email as well. We've sent it out in the past. We've just had a little bit of downtime. Gotcha. Um, eventually, Shane is going to be putting together a podcast, which will actually appear here so that you can um, hear his podcast. All the stories that he tells and retells and retells and retells. Um, we're going to try to capture those for posterity so he doesn't have to repeat himself so much. Um, he'll, but he'll still probably repeat himself. So no worries there. Um, then there's a link here for welcoming new agents. We're going to try to streamline the orientation process so new agents get everything that they need uh, in an orderly fashion. Additional connections as well as links to other modules. Now, Moxie is kind of one of these all-inclusive type things. It, it uses um, a lot of different technology to bring things together to make your business more productive. Uh, Moxie Engage is the CRM portion. Moxie Present is the listing presentations. Moxie websites, custom website that brings the leads from that website directly into your CRM. Um, Moxie Impress is the social media portion of it, Facebook posting, stuff like that. And then Moxie Promote. Amanda, can you talk on Moxie Promote? <clears throat> Moxie Promote, we'll go over at a later, at a later date, um, but it's it's just basically promoting your business. Gotcha. Okay. And a lot of these modules are being custom built for us as we work through everything. So right now, um, Engage is up and running smoothly. Next week, Present will be introduced and up and running smoothly and, well, as smooth as possible with the rollout of a new software. And we'll go from there. One, one thing I want you to notice is here on the hub, there are two things that I want you to pay attention to. There is a little widget in the bottom left called ARP Help. If you click on that widget, it lets you create a help ticket for our internal tech support. That's me. Okay, I'll be here to help answer questions, walk you through issues you're having with the software, point you in the right direction, and if need be, channel things up to Moxie so that we can get answers on how to fix your issue if, if it has to go that far. Um, you can also click on the tech support button here on the right side. It gives you the email for tech support, which is support at theamericanrealty.tech. There's a direct uh, support phone number as well, which rings straight to me. You can text that number. You can visit uh, support.theamericanrealty.tech and create a ticket, or you can click the help button, uh, which is here, the ARP help button to do tech support. So I just want you to make a note of those because it's important that you get the help you need in as quick a way as possible. If you get them to me, then we can do that. Now, over here on the right, you see another help link. That is for Moxie. That will walk you through some AI solutions that they have, kind of like a bot, and asking you questions and determine how you answer those moves you to a possible solution. 
Um, and it also gives you the option to enter a ticket directly to Moxie. Um, you can do that if you wish, that's fine as well. But we're just trying to streamline that process and have it come through us so that we don't inundate with all of the agents trying to get on board. We don't inundate them with a bunch of bunch of phone calls that we could probably handle uh, in-house. But feel free to use either one that you wish at your, um, at your discretion or at your uh, desire. Okay, so we're going to engage and engage is up in your top menu bar. And if you click on the engage menu option, it will open your main dashboard. Now your dashboard can look different depending on if you're a manager, a team leader, or just an agent. So most of us here are agents. So we're gonna look at the agent dashboard. And I'm just gonna break this down and go step by step through the various things on the dashboard. Now, I call these things bins because they kind of group things into little groups, just like if you threw everything into a bin. So I'm gonna to refer to them as bins. But if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see that every bin, bin on this page is listed over on the right-hand side. This gives you the ability to drag and drop to reorder your bins. Whatever way works best for you is what you can do to set up these different bins in the order that works best, okay? So just know that you can move those around. I do not believe you can delete the bins, okay? Not that you would actually want to anyway. So any bins that you don't use, slide them down to the bottom, get them out of your way. That way you've got the most used ones up front, all right? The first thing we're gonna approach is this first bin called stay in flow. When it comes to working with leads, contacts, customers, clients, however you refer to them, they refer to it as being in flow, okay? Because they are in the sales flow. And flow has many different parts to it, but they encourage staying in contact with your customers on a regular basis. And that's what the stay and flow bin does here, is anybody that is in your uh, CRM, anybody that is in your contacts, it automatically pulls five new people from that batch every day and puts them at the top of your list here and stay in flow because they're encouraging you to reach out to those five people that day. Next day, there'll be an additional five, okay? So as we get to the contacts and the people portion, it's gonna be important that you go through and that you actually categorize and organize your leads so that you know, okay, this lead that transferred over on my Gmail account, that's my long lost brother's uncle's sister, and I'm never gonna sell them a home because they live in Alaska. That might be somebody that, doesn't pop up in your flow on a regular basis. So um, it's gonna be important to organize your leads that way. Now, what this does is when it pulls these five up, you can skip that person. It'll drop them out of the list and you know, you'll have the other four you can handle. Or you can mark it as done. If you've reached out to them another way outside of Engage, you can mark them as done. But it's also got a drop down here for reach out. And if you click that, you'll see that it gives you the opportunity to call. And if you're using Moxie from your phone, if you click call, it gives you the ability to select a phone number and call it directly from your cell phone. You don't have to look it up. You don't have to do anything. You just push the button. If you use a dialer or some sort of software on your laptop, you can do the same thing. You'll just have to set it up so that it knows what to do when you click call. You've got the option to email and it will pull the email in right there. And if you click on that, it will take you to the ability to create an email right there. Okay, so like for that particular lead, it takes me over here to an email message. So I can type an email message to her, pop send in there, and it goes right out. Okay, it even puts my signature at the bottom that I use and everything's good and it sends it right out. And the thing is that if you send an email through Engage, it is logged in your activity, okay? I know a lot of things with CRMs, a lot of times we don't use them as efficiently as we should, but we want to keep track of how we contact you. So sending out through Engage helps 
keep track of those activities. Also, you've got the ability to do a neighborhood news to them. You can do a quick neighborhood news, which will just do a zip code, or you can do a custom neighborhood news, which allows you to customize what you send them based on a map that you draw out, or you select a radius, or you select a school district, and it will populate that neighborhood news for that particular <laughs> parameter. Okay, and we'll touch on that a little bit more as we go. If you click on the settings gear, each one of these bins has a settings gear. If you click on that settings gear, it shows you how long someone's been out of touch before you want them to resurface back into your list. 30, 60, or 90 days. They're encouraging contact every 90 days with your contacts, okay? So that's why they have 90 automatically selected. If you choose to contact all of your leads every 30 days, then it's gonna put them through the cycle every 30 days. Um, same way with 60 days. You can also select by checking these check marks, whether you want certain people to appear or not appear in your five that it pops up at the top. So you've got some selectivity to make sure that you're only getting people that you need to be communicating with on a regular basis. So you've got depending, past seller, uncategorized, active, past buyer, personal and collaborator, we don't have in those, uh, prospects, leads, marketing, and new. So you can select or deselect those however you want to, to go from there. Any questions over the stay and flow bin? I know we're turning on the fire hydrant slowly and we're going to be going through additional information. So if you have any questions, like I said, if you're in Zoom, the email signature, I have, um, we actually have an email or a uh, video done on the email signature, how to modify the email signature, how to customize it. Um, and I will make sure that everybody that's in this class gets that link so they can watch it. Uh, at a later time. On the activity feed, this shows activity that you've done within Engage. You'll notice here it just shows the different things. View the web version, you know, it just shows as we're going through this, we're, we're testing things out. So you'll see a lot of the same stuff over and over again. But the activity feed also has a settings gear. So if you click on the settings gear, it shows you activities that may be website activities, email activities, presentation activities, automated activities, and then the time frame: three days, past week, past two weeks, or past month. So that pulls your activity up there into the list, and you can scroll up and down in the list using the scroll bar to look at your activity and engage. Okay, moving down to the to-do list. The to-do list is one of these that doesn't have the settings gear, but it is pretty self-explanatory. Anything that you've got set up in your system as a task will appear here. Um, so that's why I said this is a good place to look at probably first part of the day, know who you're gonna contact for the day, know what your to-dos are for the day. You can add whatever you want to in here as well and things from your calendar that are to-dos will populate in here as well. Speaking of calendar, the calendar is our next bin, and it has the things that have been pulled in from the linked or synced calendar. This is the Gmail account that you synced when you first created your or logged into your account, and uh, you've got the various things that pop up on your calendar. It's also got a view button and a settings wheel. So we're gonna look at the settings wheel first and it'll say, what do you wanna see in your calendar? <coughs> Birthdays, anniversaries, house anniversaries, transaction tasks, general tasks and events. And as we get into transactions, you'll see a little bit of what I'm talking about, about transaction tasks. Remember a back agent, when you put somebody in, you put a transaction in, it has that list of things that it recommends you do. That's pretty much the transaction tasks that we're talking about. So if you want those to appear here, then you make sure that you select that particular check mark. House anniversaries, anniversaries and birthdays, 
are those things that really show your clients or customers that you are with them even after the sale. Uh, so that's a you know that's a viable tool there for you to use as well. Now, if you click on, click on the view button, what it does is it takes you to the calendar tab. You'll notice here that it jumped me over to the calendar tab, and it just basically shows the calendar in a little more detail. Okay, these are transaction tasks that are set up for a fake person. So I have entered them as a transaction. They are in the part of the flow where I need to schedule st staging, schedule photographer, open title. Some of these we don't use. So you can curate that list, add or delete so that they are more appropriate to what we use. Um, input listing and MLS, assign a listing number, all that kind of fun stuff appears in the calendar. Now, the calendar will only give you a day agenda type view. It won't give you a week view or a three day view or anything like that. So, if you want to see another day, you can either scroll down or click on the day you want to see. And it takes a minute. They've got little animations that pop up and stuff like that. So, it shows you okay, this would be due on the 29th. Actually, uh, there wasn't anything due for the 29th, so it jumped straight to the 30th. And again, you have the check boxes as to what you want to show here. All right. So we're going to go back to our dashboard. That's where we were here with our different bins. And when we come to the next bin, this is our sales flow. This shows how many contacts we have in the different processes that are in the sales flow. We've got one in the marketing phase. We've got one in the prospect phase, two in the active phase, and two in the pending phase. The pending phase means they've got contracts and they're headed towards closing. The actives mean that you're working with them. They're, they're looking at things to buy. They're doing stuff like that. Prospects, you're not quite there yet, but you're really working with them to get to them to that point. And marketing are those people that say, Maybe in a week, maybe in six months, you put them in your marketing flow, send them the neighborhood news on a regular basis, um, sign them up on an email you know, campaign or something like that, and they get these emails, and hopefully six months down the road, they remember your name when they're ready to list their home or when they're ready to buy it. Okay? And that's just a quick visual representation of what I've got working right now. We come to our goals completion. When you first log into your account and engage, it asks you to create a goal. The goal may be changed, but you can create a goal that's either as one of the BHAGs, be carry audacious goals, or you can set small goals and reset them throughout the year. That's up to you. Um, I set a BHAG and I said, okay, I want to earn $2,000 in commission, $200,000 in commission this year. You know, it's a goal. <laughs> but um, as you work towards that goal, as your deals go through the pending and close process, it updates the earned portion of that goal. So it's a visual guide to how well you're doing towards your goal. Uh, if you want to set monthly goals for X amount of dollars, you can do that. If you want to set quarterly goals, you can do that. It's just whatever makes you happy, you can change that goal to reflect that. Um, down here, it also has year-to-date stats. Average close rate, average commission rate, average size of the transaction, and how many transactions. So you've got a quick snapshot of what your business looks like for the year. If you come up here, you've also got the view button and the settings wheel. So I'm going to click on the settings wheel first. The only thing under the settings is whether you want to display your goal in dollars or a percentage. That's it. Very simple. So just know there's no fancy settings there. But if you click on view, it does the same thing the calendar does. And it pops you over to the goals tab and engage. So on the goals tab, it's a little more broken down for you. You've got the percentage towards your goal. But if I click on the dollar amount, it shows me what my ultimate goal is. So there's my percentage. There's my goal. It also shows me my transactions, my average size, my average rate, my average commission rate. It shows close <laughs> transactions, buyers, sellers, average time to close, average size, close rate. 
It also has a quick summary here for all of your transactions completed, the average time to close, the average size, and your close rate, as well as details on your transactions that are closed in this particular area. But you'll notice over here to the left, you've got additional selections that you can make. You can click on active and pending. And what this does then is it changes it and it looks at the active and pending transactions. Okay, four active selling transactions, average time in process, 15 days, average size, 190. Over here, all four in that, time in process, 15, repeats the information. And then here it just goes down and shows you the information for those particular deals. Okay, two of those deals are, are one, one of the deals is a, a sample deal and the other one is one that is just getting into process. So that's why it hasn't updated yet. You've also got the ability here to manage these details. You may, what Engage does is it syncs with the MLS. So if it is in, in FMLS and Georgia MLS, it'll pull two over. Okay, it'll pull FMLS and Georgia MLS. If it is in Lake Country and Georgia, it'll pull two. So you can get you can get the idea that this over here might look kind of, you know, elevated if it's duplicating your transactions. The manage gives you the opportunity to come in here and delete some of those duplicates. Okay, and that's going to be, do I want to keep the Georgia MLS one or do I want to keep the FMLS? You know, just your personal decision which one you want to keep. But you've got the ability to take those out of those details so that it doesn't artificially inflate your numbers. Then you've got your prospect selection over to the left. Shows I've got one active buyer transaction. Average time in process, 22. Average size, 125. Again, everything shows here that this transaction is active. Next button you've got here is your GCI forecast. And then basically this takes what you've currently got in the, in the pot, in the sales flow, and it estimates, okay, if you keep this up or whatever, you're gonna make about this much. You know, so it gives you that, that running goal forecast type thing. And it takes into account that information. And then comparable average, it compares you to agents in your office, okay? My office, average transactions completed per agent, average transaction size per agent, okay? And then it puts yours right beside it to embarrass you or motivate you. <laughs> and then here under MLS, it shows you based on your MLS, what your current percentages and guides would be. What's pretty wild is look at the average transaction size per agent in the Georgia MLS right now, 411,000. And I just saw an article that the average sale price in Georgia is up to 415, I believe, or 418 right now. So um, that's way up. Okay. One thing I want you to pay attention to here is when I'm in the goals tab, I've got a settings wheel up here to the right. If I click that settings wheel, it gives me overall engaged settings, but these in light blue are specifically geared towards the goals sheet. So I can click on GCI goal and I can change it. This is where you would go in and reset your quarterly or whatever you wanted as you went. So if you reach that initial goal, bump it up, that kind of thing. It also gives you the ability to see your 2021 as well as your 2020. So it gives you the opportunity to view previous year's goals as well. It also gives you the ability to enter your commission rate. If you've got what you normally would do, then use that. We know that there is no set commission. So, and then tour, it basically walks you through everything that I just walked through. And it just basically gets you to acknowledge the different areas as it shows them to you. So if you forget what we talked about, you've got that tour that you can go back to and look at things. Under this also, you've got the help center, which would take you to the AI help for Moxie, as well as feedback, which goes straight to their development team. 
So back to the dashboard. The next thing below our sales flow, our goals completion are my listings. So these are active and pending listings and sold listings. And these show only the current year. Okay, so if you're going in here and you're looking, oh, I sold one in September, why, or December, why isn't it in here? It's because it was closed in 2021. You may also see active and pending showing for one that may have already closed. I would recommend going back into Georgia MLS and make sure it's not in a pending status in Georgia MLS because we've got, we've had that issue. Georgia MLS hasn't updated it yet to sold, so it doesn't update to sold in your numbers, okay? So that could be something that you would see as well. If you click on view for my listings, it takes you to a blank screen. There we go. It takes you to a card view of your different transactions that you've got. You've got your three dots, which I call the snowman. If you click on those, it gives you different things that you can do as well. Listing announcement, you can send a listing announcement out. You can promote your listing. You can go to the listing. You can print a flyer or you can share it with other people. You've also got the ability here to create a gallery or to add it to a hot sheet. And that hot sheet's within the Engage Moxie platform. All right, so back to Engage. That takes us through all the bins. So you see the order that the bins are in. You may be thinking in your head, I really don't want to see that every day. So let's bump it to the bottom. Remember, just click and drag them wherever you want them and you'll be good. All right. So next thing over, any questions on the main dashboard before I move on? All right. The next tab is people you'll see that there is an overview button, a my people button, and an add people button. If you click on overview, it pulls up a quick overview of your contacts, your people. It shows you again the sales flow. It also shows you recommended actions for the certain ones you may be working with right now. And it also shows you new leads that are in your system. You, it only shows you a few. You have these view all buttons to let you see more. Then over here on the right, it shows the recently viewed ones that I may have looked at. Okay, so again, it's a good snapshot of everything you have. You'll notice here, it says you have 1,094 people in your database and you can see a full list. So you can get to your full list by clicking here or you can click my people from the dropdown. Okay. So when you get to your list, this is the list of all the contacts that are in your system. Okay, it shows the date they were imported. It shows how many there are, and they're sorted by first name. You can sort them by last name. You can sort them by recently added, recently viewed, or recently modified. Okay, you can also adjust the sort order by alphabetical, where now it's starting at the end and going up whereas the other way starts at the beginning and goes down. You can't say A to Z because Shane's had stars in it. So it doesn't see those as letters. It puts them at the end. So just know that. All right. With these contacts in here, you've got a couple of things you can do. You can search for a particular contact by clicking in the search bar and typing in a name. It'll pull up any name that matches what you typed. Since I've created these samples as Joe Flo, Joe Flo Jr. and Joe Flo III, I typed Joe Flo, it pulled them all three up. 
Okay. If you want to go back to your regular, you can hit clear and it will clear those. Or you'll notice that it creates a little tag here with an X. You can click that X and it will erase it as well and clear it back out. You also have the ability to group people within your contacts. So if you have a group at church that you want to market to, you can put church group and put the people in that group. Still leaves them in your main contacts, but it groups them. And then there's a categorized wizard. Now, remember earlier I said it's important that you categorize your people. The categorized wizard walks you through this process in a way that is a little more interactive, I guess you could say, than going to each one individually. If I click on the categorized wizard, it pulls up six cards at a time. And from here, I can start organizing my contacts. You'll notice right off the bat, I've got client or non-client. Client is anybody that you want to market to, want to work with, hope to sell a home, hope to hope that they buy a home, hope to work with in any way as a buyer, seller, whatever. A non-client is a collaborator, maybe another agent that you work with that you're not going to be marketing to, or um, your brother or uncle that lives in Alaska. That might be one where you put them as a non-client. But you'll see when you click on them as a client, it gives you other options. So you're not just marketing them as a client, you're actually taking the first step towards your flow and communicating with them. So if I want to create AA Hoover as a client, it gives me the option to create a marketing plan for them, to make them a seller prospect, or to make them a buyer prospect right off the bat. And if I click on those, it gives me even more granularity, okay? Are they a past seller, a past buyer, a past seller, a buyer? None of these. Are they brand new in your, in your system? So it's important that you go through this process and organize people so that you're marketing to the right people. Now, this person is, I'm selecting for a marketing plan. It says, keep this person at top of mind with a marketing plan. So then I can click create plan, and that takes me into another area. It says marketing plans ready to go. Marketing plans we set up in a different area. So it just automatically puts them in a marketing plan, okay? Which we would customize later, just so you know that. Now, for this one here, say they're a non-client. We click on non-client, it comes up personal. That's mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, cousin that you may not ever work with. Collaborator, loan officer, other agent, anybody like that that you may do business with on a regular basis. This might be a good place to put your roofing contractors, other, other people like that in there at, as in your contacts. Or you can remove them from Engage, all right? A couple of things. If you remove them from Engage, it does not take them out of your Google contacts. It just prevents them from showing up in your list of contacts. It does not delete them from Engage. You can actually come up here, click on the little settings wheel, when you're in the people process and it gives you the ability to work with those removed people and restore them if you need to. So just know that you've got that ability as well. Once you mark them, they're designated as that and you can move on to the next card. Now what this does is it tells me I've got 1,069 left to do. I can show more to categorize more people and just go from that, just keep working through that process. Okay, you'll notice my number also went up to six in sales flow. That's because I put that other guy on a marketing plan. So if I look at my sales flow, or my, um, yeah, my sales flow right here, I've now got two in marketing. You see how it updated that? Okay, so with the My People, you've also got some other things you can do. So here, if I click on this particular person, it pulls up their contact card. 
This gives me the ability to edit their information. It gives me the ability to select a language preference. So I know they speak Spanish. If I spoke Spanish, I could speak to them in Spanish, that kind of thing. And it shows you that they are designated as person. You've also got the ability here to call them. If there was an email address listed, you would have the ability to email them. You've all, you notice you don't have the ability to market to them because they are listed as a personal contact. So you need to make sure when you're organizing these, if it's somebody you absolutely positively know you will never work with, then categorize them that way. If there's a possibility, make them a possible client, okay? Under edit, like I said, it pulls up the card. You can make modifications, add emails, add addresses, add their instant messaging thing, add their websites, relationships, spouse, kids, birthdays, that kind of thing, special dates, anniversaries, birthdays, house anniversaries, uh, personal profile. Uh, you can add a personal field here, add their social media, and you'll notice that you can change them back to or change them within the non client <laughs> categories into a collaborator, or you can mark them as a past seller, past buyer, but they still remain non-client, okay? If you make any changes in there and you say, oops, I didn't mean to do that, hit cancel. Takes you back. Okay, so you've also got a notes selection over here on the left. These are notes that you add in here that are synced with your email account as well. So if you add a note in your email account, it will bring it in here as well. Um, some people have said that if you're working with a particular listing or anything like that in the notes, maybe put your, um, your box numbers or your box codes or stuff like that if you need to. That way you can keep a record of them. Uh, however you want to use the notes section, it gives you the ability to do that. Activity, it would also show any activity that you might have had with this particular person. They all start with that Aaron added to your sphere, okay? And it shows the date they were added. Then you can click create custom activity. It gives you the option to add anything from a phone call to a meeting in person and everything possible in between. Notes related to that, the date it occurred, the time it occurred, and click done to save it. Okay, and that would log the activity here with this particular person. I've also got the ability here to add subscription. If I click add subscription, it takes me to this to add the neighborhood news subscription or listing announcements. Even though they're not a client, I still do have that ability. If I click add subscription, here's the quick with the postal code and the custom targeted search. I want to show you that if you click on the targeted search, this is what it pulls up. Okay, so this right here, it pulled the address from my computer as to where I was logged in. And it populated things around that address. I can come up here and I can change that address to whatever I want it to be. I can make it more general. I can make it more specific. I can also come in here and say, okay, I want minimum price of $175,000 with no max. If I apply that, it will meet the criteria down a little more to where there may not be as many. Beds and baths, you can even get granular in that, as well as other filters as for particular type of structure and square footage minimums. One thing I want you to know here is that you've got the ability to reset all of those filters takes them all away and just leaves the primary one of the address that was up in that particular search bar. Okay, so neighborhood news is a good tool to use if you want to target a subdivision, if you want to target a particular zip code, anything like that. Okay. Again, you've got the remove from engage and you can send a copy of the profile. Okay. This person is in my engaged list. Adam and I might be working with them together. 
So I can send a copy of this profile to him and it adds them to the, his engagements. Okay, so then it would allow us to communicate with that person um, more along the lines of a team. Now there are team settings, which we're not going into today, but just know that that is an option. Okay, any questions about the people portion of engage? Okay. Calendar we looked at, so I'm not going to touch on it again. Goals we looked at, so I'm not going to touch on it again. That brings us over to campaigns. Hello. Yes. Can you just refresh me on how do you populate their people's um, database? You When you first log into um, Moxie, mm -hmm. you will be asked for the email address that you wish to link to your Moxie account. <laughs> And it needs to be a Gmail account or a Gmail account. Yes. No Yahoo, no Hotmail, no um, so and so, so and so.com, unless it is a Google Workspace account and it's looked at as Google. But you link a Gmail account and it will pull the contacts from that Gmail account into your engaged database. Mm. Okay? okay. If you're using Outlook.com, as your email provider, that mm -hmm. functionality may be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a question as to whether you can download multiple Gmail accounts. The answer to that would be no. Mm -hmm. One okay, so if you're okay. doing business, then it would be one business Gmail that you record. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. On that same note, we just need to reiterate to everyone, if you do not have a Gmail account in our back agent system, we need to receive that from you so that we can update your account. Yes. So that, and we can resend your initial email for logging in. Right. What will happen, and this may give you a little preemptive knowledge, if you go ahead and you log in and you enter a Gmail account and you get the spinning wheel that just spins and spins and spins for days, then you're going to know something's wrong. Odds are the email address that we had in the roster when we pulled everything over from Backagent is not the same as that Gmail account that you're trying to link. So there's a mismatch and the system won't sync because of that mismatch. All right. So if you've got, say, for example, a theamericanrealty.com email that is in your back agent, you need to change that or let us know to change that to a Gmail address that you're going to want to see to Mox. The problem with the theamericanrealty.com emails is that is merely a forward and it won't pull anything from those. It has to have the actual Gmail to pull that information in. Adam, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I am trying to, I have accessed the Moxie website uh, just normally. When I try to go into engage and all of that, all I keep, all I um, have been doing really is the training. I'm not able to make any changes like to download contacts or anything as a matter of fact based upon what you were saying earlier sounded to me as if when we log into back agent it gives us access to go into moxie works is that no. correct or am i no. that's not true back agent oh, does not give you access into moxie moxie will in the future give you back agent access directly from within it now, the, oh, well. you are most likely in the education portal and not the main portal. So if you go to right. moxyworks.com, that will be mm -hmm. the main portal that you will have to set up with your Gmail account, and then you'll be able to reach, engage, et cetera. But if you are in education.moxyworks.com, all you're going to have there are training videos. And it sounds oh, like right. that's where you are. 
Pat, yes, yes. Ms. Pat, exactly. Do you need us to resend that initial email to you? <laughs> yes, I guess for you logging in? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Are you going to handle Thank that, ma'am? I can do that right now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Everybody understand that? Cool. All right. So when we go to campaigns, you're going to see a number of different campaigns that are available. Um, you've got the ability to do your own campaigns. You've got the ability to do e-blasts, neighborhood news, listing announcement, and then email campaigns that are more specific than just an e-blast. Okay. What you'll notice here is if you go to my campaigns, there's nothing there yet. You haven't done anything. So if you go to my campaigns and click add from library, it's going to pull up the different campaigns that the brokerage has already created. Amanda is working her fingers to the bone to try to make sure we get good campaigns created and are available. And what you'll be able to do then is you come in here to a campaign, you select that particular campaign, you can preview it, and it'll show you an idea of what it looks like and the schedule for it. Just give you a quick idea of what it looks like. This is the stock text it shows, the, the footer, the image that it shows, and your information at top. And you've got the ability here to add that to your campaigns. Once you add it to your campaigns, then you can start assigning people to. Okay. So if you get in here, you can also click these little arrows to take you to the next campaign in the list. And what it does is it shows you the different seasonal campaigns out of this list and how they change throughout the year. You can click here to go back to your library and you'll notice the other particular. Yes, ma'am. So what shows up in the recipient's email box? Like what is the um, what is that the title or the subject line? Does it have our name in it? Does it just say the, the subject line would have, if I'm not mistaken, um, something related to the topic of the campaign. Okay. And it would be from your email address. Okay. okay? So that's where they would see your name. And then when they opened it, they would see all of your information as well. Okay. Now, some of these are not editable. So just know that they're just in there. They can't be edited. You can still add them to your campaigns, but you cannot make changes to them. You can also select e-blasts from your library, which I don't believe there are any yet. You can also select emails from your library. So this is a sample of new lead intro copy, just to show you a preview of that. Basically just says, hi, thanks for your interest. I'm here to help. Is there a good time for us to talk? You can change that information. If we need to customize things, we can do that. And you click here to add it to your emails and then you can assign it. When you have your campaigns up and running, you'll notice here it'll populate all campaigns. How many of them are waiting set up by you? How many of them are running? How many of them are paused? And how many of them are archived? But the important part exists right here at the top of this campaign. When you've got campaigns running, you'll see the campaign name, the schedule that that campaign is on, the open rate for that particular campaign, the click rate. People may click on it, but not open it. The actual opens, the actual clicks, people who have unsubscribed immediately, and then people, I can't remember what categorizes there, but I think it shows you like a group or, or whether it's a, a contact or that information. So it gives you very good statistics. If you're sending out 100 emails to 100 people and every last one of them unsubscribe, you might want to reconsider what's in that email or reconsider the group you're sending them to. You know? So just know that that helps you get around the, uh, or not get around, but actually stay in um, compliance with the spam rules. So campaigns is a very big thing that we're not going to go into very great detail. We will be having some more detailed advanced training um, as we go through and get everybody up and going. But right now, this is the last of our basic training in Engage. 
And like she said, we're going to be going through uh, three weeks, the next three weeks at two o'clock Thursday, um, 10 a.m. the following Thursday, 6 p.m. the following Thursday. All of those are added into, um, I believe they're already in um, back agent. Um, so just know that those trainings are coming up. And then we're going to be going into the impress module for three weeks and the website module for three weeks. Well, all the sessions be recorded? All the sessions should be recorded, yes. Um, this session actually had a little more detailed stuff than our first two because we learned more yesterday than we had known up to that point. So as the trainings go on, there may be some new stuff in there, but we're trying to make sure we keep people abreast of what's going on and, you know, any things, any big changes that we might have found. All trainings are going to be on Thursday, Felicia. The signature block, I believe, does not populate in the campaigns. Um, I know, Amanda, I changed my signature block, and when I looked at that campaign, it didn't have the, the um, change signature. So I don't believe that you can customize the signature block on a campaign. But I'll ask that question and find out that answer. And I know we're right at seven. I don't I want to respect everybody's time. Are there any questions on what we went over tonight? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you say you won't be able to get into engage right now if you don't have your Gmail account linked. Right. Right. So well, what, what you'll do is the first time you log into Moxie, mm -hmm. it's going to ask for that Gmail account. But if that Gmail account is not the same one that is listed in your roster, then that's going to cause an issue. Now, if you want to come up after I stop everything, I can check the roster and see which email address is in there. And then you can tell me, okay, change this or not. Okay. If there are no questions, I want to thank everybody. I hope I touched all the questions that are online. If I did not, I will go through them and try to catch them and, and answer you back correctly. Um, but I hope you use Engage. I hope you use the modules as they come forward. I think you're going to find this a very valuable tool for your business. I really encourage you to dig in there. And I teach middle school, high school computer science. And I tell them, go in there and try to break it. Okay. First of all, if you do break it, that helps the developers. <laughs> Second of all, it teaches you more about the system. Okay. The only way you're going to feel comfortable using the system is if you get in there and play around. And if anything happens and you say, hey, what do I need to do? Contact, contact me through a ticket. And I'll say, oh, you really messed things up. Or I'll say, oh, that's easy. Let's just do this. Okay. So, um, our goal is to make everybody more uh, productive and efficient as, as we can. Question, one question. Yes, can, I, can I log into Moxie on more than one computer? Yes, ma'am. At, at a time? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end the uh, remote session. Again, if you need anything, send an email to support at theamericanrealty.tech, T-E-C-H, and that will come straight to me, and I will address it as quickly as possible. Thank you.